So it wouldn't be a trip in from Romantic if I didn't get Ronnie to spill some beans on something top secret. <laughs> Where do I get this reputation from? <laughs> Ronnie, you are, you are the master of Mr. Leakiness. <laughs> it's brilliant. Okay. I'm right. saying nothing. Mm. Mars Attacks yes. is now effectively delivered. It's coming out. It's just down the road. Um, that can mean only one thing. You must become gearing up for something new. Yeah. And we have a little bit of uh, a little a bit clue. here. A little hint. Um, there has been some postings and rumbling about it. I want to get the inside track on it now. Okay. So, Ronnie, proceed to spill your guts, please. Spill my guts. Okay. On Dwarf King's Quest. Dwarf King's Quest, Dungeon Sagas. What's it going to be called? Who knows? That's going to mm -hmm. be an excitement until the Kickstarter goes live. But I think this August we are going to bring some of the kind of mantic craziness to uh, dungeon crawling. Now, this isn't your first um, kind of foray into dungeon crawling. You've done mm -hmm. a very, I'd say, like a very simplified version of it with uh, Dwarf King's Hold yep. and, um, in the past. Well, it was almost where we'd, we'd done, I mean, we were talking about taking the hard road. You know, when Kings of War started, we decided, you know, let's just start with full war games, full clip together miniatures, you know, set up a whole gaming system, whole universe, whole genre. Mm -hmm. We didn't make life easy. And one of the things that, during that journey, I said, well, I was talking to Jake and he was wanting to do some games. So he actually wrote four ideas down for me. And then the only rule was you had to use existing sprues. Yes. We paid all this money for the plastics and we just had to find new and interesting ways to keep using them and mm -hmm. introduce people into Mantic. So we, he came up with a few ideas. A couple of them were really great. The best was the Dwarf King's Hold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Series of dwarfs acting as the adventurers going into an undead dungeon, um, achieving a series of missions. Mm -hmm. Hugely successful. We yeah. were our most successful product at that point. We revisited it with a couple more expansions. So Dead Rising became Green Menace, mm -hmm. which used elves against orcs. And then there was Ancient Grudge, which was, um, you know, expansions and heroes and yeah. other things. Something we always wanted to come back to, and the one thing we always wanted to do was, of course, the, the classic dungeon party. Yes. But we didn't have the tools at the time. We didn't have those molds. It would have been metal figures. Dreadbull comes along and for 18 months off he don't touch the ground. We've got the products we've got coming around. Constantly been asked about it. There's a lot of fondness for it. We really wanted to revisit it. Um, and, and, and it became, you know what, it's time to do it. It's, we're ready. We've, we've done the... I wanted it to be play out of the box. Really, you get your pieces, you get your models. There's not a lot of assembly. Well, that wasn't possible. You know, mm. at the time we had hard plastic from Eredra, we were then working with this rest stick, but even that was, you know, there was no assembly way. So for Dread Bull, where you've got your eight, nine, ten players, you glue them together, it's not too hard. But I'd, the vision for the Dwarf King's Quest game was play. Take it yeah. out and play it. Well, we did the locker pieces, they were assembled, made, details great. We then did Mars Attacks, mm -hmm. where it was that. And, and actually, and that's this that's this PVC material yeah, that you're now using on the more board game. Uh, the board game end because yeah. the mm. the accuracy with the details is 100. percent We've yeah. seen that with the Mars Attacks figures. Yeah, it's all there. Um, it doesn't have that really hardness that you want, perhaps for your own you know full time army. Mm -hmm. But for when you're playing, when you're building up big Martian invasions, or you're having your dungeon, absolutely works. And I've seen some of this stuff painted really nicely in, in yeah. other games. We've got ours. We painted the Martians, and we went, "This is perfect." Mm -hmm. So one of the big pieces was unlocked, which we both a were able to you know afford the tooling to do the the, the party game, and the way that we can realise the vision of of taking out the game and playing it and not compromising detail. Because your hard plastics, one piece, are always yeah. like that, because that's the only way they come out the tool. Now, clearly, Mantic you're, is a very different company now from what it was when Dwarf King's Hold launched. Um, are we looking at, you know, like Mars Attacks was 100% developed from scratch. Dead Zone, 100% developed from scratch. Dreadbolt, 100% developed from scratch. Um, I take it we're no longer in the position where you're having to reuse sprues or anything like <laughs> that. We're looking at a full-on dungeon crawling adventure game, 100% custom developed from scratch. Absolutely every single sculpt, mm -hmm. brand new, designed specifically for the game. So we'll talk about the adventurers in a second. There's also the, the undead, the skeletons, new skeletons. Of course, put it next to one of our skeletons and it's going to fit in. It's going to be a hero mm -hmm. figure. It can be something interesting. But... Every single one of these are brand new sculpts yeah. by top 
top draw sculptors specifically for this game. Now, clearly where it goes yeah. kind of depends on the Kickstarter. And, yeah. uh, and we've seen your Kickstarters go stratospheric. <laughs> so um, who knows where this could go? Yeah. But in your own minds yeah. at the moment, what, you know, what, what can we expect Dwarf King's Quest to be like as a game? So if we start with the base, and I think this is, as long as we fund this, we'll be very happy. If it goes on from there, that's great. But the, the base game that we envisage is, is and it's one of those things you talk about, and I, I did this when we were looking at you, just dungeon crawlers, and you, you talk about it, and you say, when I go back to the hero quest and the you know, Warhammer quest back of, of, of the olden days, which was a really, particularly hero quest, a very simple, straightforward game. Yeah. It was a lot of people's first game, first toy soldier game. Mm-hmm. And, Mine included. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. and you know there was a whole generation of GW store managers, and that was there. And and I thought it was a wonderful game. When you step back and you say, "Who's doing that now?" I, Nobody there, really. There's lots no. of great games mm -hmm. out there. There's there's you know there's Descent, which is a really nice, but quite com, you know, complete, quite deep. I'd yeah. say quite, you've, you've really got to know your way around a board game before you there, start doing that. There's complexity, like we're big yeah. fans of Descent, but uh, there is complexity too. to Descent, and Descent never really captured that that feel of the box of Hero Quest or the box of Warhammer Quest. Yeah. Um, so it's... So I think it's a wonderful game, but it's not right in that base Hero Quest kind of starting point. Mm -hmm. You've got the wonderful things like the, the Super Dungeon Explore genre yeah. where you've got, you know, kind of the comedy anime angle, mm -hmm. which is the joke about the, yeah. the thing. But they're not sat in that central point. There isn't one. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to try and do with Dwarf King's Quest, or Dungeon Sargas, you know, uh, is make that game. Right. So let's talk about what you see. So you lift yeah. the lid off. Yep. And you're going to see there's, there's four party members over there. There's mm -hmm. four adventurers. We'll say, well, you can see there's a couple of clues here. There's going to be a barbarian. Great. There's a barbarian, a wizard, an elf. Can you guess um, what the other one's going to be? Is it going to be a fighter, a dwarf? Dwarf fighter, of course. <laughs> How can you have a party without a dwarf fighter? So there's those four characters laid out. You're going to have yeah. first scenario will be the uh, barbarian and the dwarf because they're mm -hmm. only going to need to move and fight. Yep. Going and, and meeting up with or rescuing or whatever the uh, elf and the wizard. Yeah. Scenario two, you're now going to have magic and you're going to have um, shooting. Ranged attacks. Oh, so, uh, so you learn as you play, basically, uh, uh, effectively, like the early games that we that we went into. So, step by step, as we go through it, each mission is going to introduce a bit more complexity yeah. until we finally. Till you're there, and you go. Yeah. And it's not going to take much at this level because there's there, but we don't want it to go. Here's magic. Just mm -hmm. if you want to, if you're just getting started, if this is your genuine your first dip into toy soldiers, yeah, just get these hero guys, move them around, and because it's going to be fighting against a whole host of of the undead, mm -hmm. it's how you move. And oh, if they outnumber me, suddenly my hero is not so heroic anymore. He gets yeah. worn down, he gets bashed down, then they get a wound, and all of a sudden you're in trouble. So you realise how to make sure your guys stay safe, work together. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's put magic and, and bow in there. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you've got a full, complete party. And now, let's talk a little bit about the dungeons as yeah. well, because like, the dungeon is often the star of the show, really. So, okay. it's, um, um, are, are you going to go with, um, with tiles where a dungeon builds up, or are you going with a, just a board? Or No, it's tiles. I mean, we, we like this from our you know, Dwarf King's uh, hold series. Much thicker card, proper thick, big cardboard. We Good. tried to do something there where we, we glued it. The print was quality. It didn't quite work, but very much you build a dungeon. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be laid out. We're going to have them with lots of corridors, narrow mm -hmm. corridors, pinch points. That's yeah. where you, know, you use tactically the terrain, like in a war games, to outnumber, to try and create. You've got to think about getting your bow so you can, you can mm -hmm. get your shots in and what have you. So, but very much, it might go as far as doors and then you don't know what's on the other side, possibly. Yeah. Or you might set the whole thing up. So in the mm -hmm. early starter sets, it'll all be set up. Yeah. And then later on as it goes, it might come out in phases so you don't quite know what's around. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a number where, you know, what happens in one can link on to what happens mm -hmm. in the next. But all, all beautiful art stock. We've got a great guy called Luigi doing a load of tiles that look fantastic. Yeah. And they're going to be on lovely thick cards. So you're going to have the adventurers. You've got your, you've got your um, tiles. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the baddies. Yeah. Well, this is going to be themed around the undead. This is going to be about the return of uh, Morsi Brisk from the first um, game. Mm -hmm. 
not only with your heroes, you, the other heroes are going to get the Mordebris himself. He's going to get his Banshee, who's going to be, um, you know, one of the evil evil characters in the box. Yeah. But then you're going to get a whole heap of regular skeletons, armored zombies, ghost um, zombies. Trolls, zombie trolls, zombie trolls, zombie <laughs> trolls, zombie trolls. Um, so that there's that real sense that as you get tougher, you're fighting tougher and tougher things. Yeah, you know, as you get deeper, um, which with as you start with some skellies, there'll be some zombies going on to as it funds out uh, an undead dwarf king mm -hmm. with his dwarf revenant heroes. So we've got revenants, which are kind of uber skeletons, armored yeah. skeletons. Well, he's going to be armored skeleton dwarfs which is the Dwarf King and his retinue. Yep. All um, undead as well, aren't all they? All undead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got a really strong theme and it's bringing it back into that Dwarf mm -hmm. King's Hold where the book is, which is what you're trying to find. You're trying to get this, stop this book falling into this guy's hands. Yeah. And if you don't complete your missions, it's going to be very bad news for the rest of uh, Mantica. And in terms then of the of the actual gameplay itself, uh, Dwarf King's Hold was maybe a little more combat -y based than kind of questing based. It, is the balance going to change a little bit now, yeah. is it? Yeah, and that's that's what the work that, that, that Jake and the guys are doing right now is just making each hero interesting enough yeah. that, that they can play in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think as you play through the scenarios, the couple of things that are gonna happen is, so scenario one, move and shoot, scenario two, shooting and magic. Scenario three, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna try and get into this dwarf room and the mm -hmm. dwarf is gonna find a hammer. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to get there and get this artifact. Scenario four, the dwarf character, which will be on his own character sheet, will start it now with this hammer. Right. Okay, so there is there's a, a progression there as things build Correct. up. Correct. So although it's the named character, he now has that. At the yeah. end of scenario four, uh, they're finding a, a page from the spell book. Mm -hmm. The wizard will now have that spell. Right. Okay. So he's now got two spells, not one, or three, mm -hmm. not four. So... What that means is we can control the balanced forces. Mm -hmm. As the heroes are getting tougher, the baddies they're fighting yeah. can scale up in quantity or quality. And, and at the base level, this, this game is just a straightforward playthrough to stop, you know, Mortibrus getting his hands on the book and mm -hmm. getting it back. Scenario six or seven, turn your cards over, guys, because mm -hmm. your heroes are now legendary. Right. So on his yeah. character now, he'll say, you've got that hammer and you've got this shield and you've yeah. got that armor and you've got a bump on your, you know, weapon stat. It's uh -huh. now easy for you to hit things. You're scaling up. But of course, now you start meeting zombie trolls and zombie troll shamans yeah. and, and dwarf well, kings. On, on the subject of, of, of monsters, well, one of the things for me that was always a real shame, really, was... Um, uh, Warhammer Quest, for example, there was a huge fantasy range there that could be utilised that. You guys have built up a hefty fantasy range as well. Yep. Um, is there any chance that we, we could start to see you expand the stat lines so as we could start to you know, it, yeah. bring those guys mm -hmm. into, the, yeah. in, into the, the, the dungeons? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting, because we had a big dilemma, because of course, when you're doing an adventure, the idea is get some more gold, mm -hmm. spend the gold, get a bit of piece of kit. But if you keep doing that in those first scenarios, it can be unbalanced because if yes. you don't find enough, the enemy is too tough. Yeah, and that that could kind of ruin that game through experience for the first time player. Mm -hmm. Or if it's if it's good players, if their forces aren't balanced, yeah, then you know the one that's not got the weaker force will lose. So the top of the box, heroes, rule book with the scenarios in it, mm -hmm. your 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 baddies, Mortibrus, and a really straightforward where there is progression. But the progression is organised for you. Right, okay. So there's no thoughts. If you want to play Scenario 7, if you know how to play, you just take it out, turn the cards up, put the tiles away we've told you, put the baddies where we've told you, and start playing. Mm -hmm. But, because it wouldn't be romantic if we didn't do something kind of crazy. Right. We never just do straightforward. Literally in the middle of the box, I want to put a piece of card. Uh-huh. And I want to put the abandoned hope, all ye who enter here, and print a large trap door on it. Right. And you take it out. Yeah. And underneath it is the Book of Depravity. <laughs> right. The Hall of Heroes. They won't let me call it the Book of Depravity, will they? But it's where Jake and Stuart, and, 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 and clearly yourself as well, can have that kind of depraved attitude into all of the wonderful things that a role, tabletop role-playing game can be. So 
So once you've played through, you've got this like hidden compartment in the box, you peel that back and bam, there's your key to taking it to the next level then. And so the base level will be how to take what you've got and build your own dungeons. Yeah. How to set them up, how to think about it. If we fund out, and either the, the lower level funding, the first thing we want to knock over is expansions that allow you to do full character classes mm -hmm. with character... Um, Progressions and progression. things. Yeah. So start with the dwarf. Do you want him to be a fighter or a dwarf engineer? Yeah. Do you want the human to be a cleric or a wizard or a whatever? Mm -hmm. And then as they do it, they can get skills and can level up. Yeah. They get money, spend it by equipment. Mm -hmm. So you're straight away tapping into all of that really deep, rich excitement. Another expansion, stat line for every single thing in the Kings of War range for the whole undead. So you can right. have werewolves, zombies, yeah. uh, um, vampires, all of it can be ruled out there. So mm -hmm. we can just roll out, as it runs out, we can just roll and add more and more into this book mm -hmm. that's, that doesn't water down the initial experience or the balanced gameplay, yeah. but allows you to have a DM that can build dungeons. Mm -hmm. that could go on and do solo play, so you can, you can play yeah. co-op and so on and so forth. Four new heroes in there, in the bottom, so you can play the top stuff again mm -hmm. with a cleric. Uh, I think there is a shape shifter from the new nature army. Uh -huh. So it looks like a big uh, lizard man, salamander type. Yeah. Uh, the cleric is a female from the sisters, uh, you know, the Basilean uh -huh. sisters range. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're starting to get real depth and we've taken it on from your classic barbarian elf with mm -hmm. a dwarf fighter into a whole new genre. There'll be more cards, there'll be more depth and more deepness. Uh, character pack will do So it's a, like two games in one. Yeah. And the interesting thing for me is, um, for a lot of us, you know, um, HeroQuest and, uh, and it's like, wasn't only our route into miniature gaming, but for many of us it was actually our route into the likes of role playing as well. Yeah. And it's nice to see that you've went down that route. You know, like we've fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. This this is like Hero Quest was almost like a and D light for us at the yeah, time. Yeah. So this this is starting to feel like you know an entry point. Well, you're correct. Playing a board game, but you can when, when you're a twelve year old boy, you're visual. Yeah. You want to see the hero. You want to see the model. You want to see what he's killing. I want to run up to him and hit him and roll some dice. Mm -hmm. And like with anything, I think then some for some of us it turns into a passion for the toy soldier, yeah. and you go down the kind of war game route which was certainly mm -hmm. the way I went. I played some D&D, &D, but for me, seeing the soldiers, seeing everything being painted and collecting was the, was the joy. Mm -hmm. For others, it goes more into the kind of role-play yeah. side. So they, they, you know, they can go that way. So I think the first, the first phase is to fund out the base game. Yeah. So it can be wonderful. I think it's, that's going to be two things. A simple, straightforward playthrough of the base, and then, all right, let's go deeper. Oh, Ronnie, look, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk about it. My pleasure. Um, guys, what about that? The Kickstarter will be kicking off soon, um, and you will definitely want to head over and check that one out.